the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Danielle Arquette is passionate about teaching mumpreneurs how to get their priorities right, book out their diaries and attract leads to their business. And so if you want your clients to invest emotionally in the product, it's all about selling the story. Um, and that might be your story. So um, I just um, wanted to really encourage your audience. I'm someone that did come from a background of I have been in abusive relationships in the past. I have overcome a lot of mental trauma and anguish and all of those things in my life to be where I'm at today. And um, the journey's never over, but, you know, it is amazing how strong and resilient we can be as women. And I just really wanted to encourage each and every woman that is in your community um, just to know, well, just to know, number one, you're so loved and you're so needed and your gift is so needed in this world. So just really... um, you know, focus on that. Focus on what it is. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch from charlenelynch.com. Healing Through Love is a social enterprise whose vision is to shift awareness on domestic and family violence within the community and to support our survivors. Our mission is to provide family and domestic violence survivors with a soft place to land by offering advice and services available to them and their families. We interview experts and survivors who share their personal stories and offer advice to those who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their healing journey. As well as the podcast, Healing Through Love, we also have annual Pamper Days here in Adelaide and also in Tasmania. And this is where we have local businesses get together and pay it forward by providing services and resources for a day to give our survivors a much needed deserve day of indulgence. Think day spa on steroids where we have massage therapy set up we have hairdressers we have information booths we have neck and shoulder massage we have makeup you name it it's all happening it's all happening for free and uh, it's all in service and so looking forward to our next one which is may next year just finalizing the location as we speak and today we've got a very special guest with you with us today one of my favorites it's danielle ackett uh, she's the founder of Sales Funnel Supermum, an online marketing agency helping mumpreneurs across the globe. So it's a global business to launch their online businesses. As an internationally published author, entrepreneur, speaker, and educator in the online marketing space, she works alongside service based coaches and e commerce businesses to help them align their digital marketing to their business vision. So I'd love to welcome, hello, Danielle, how are you? Hi, Charlene, I'm absolutely fabulous. Thank you for asking. Um, Recovering a little bit from a flu, but outside of that, hopefully I won't have a coughing fit. Um, I went to my chiropractor yesterday and as he was adjusting me, I was literally having a coughing fit like all over the office and I felt so bad. (laughs) so I was like it's just uh, one of those things you don't want to cough in public these days right yeah yeah, so been doing well outside of just being a little bit down with the flu um and there's been a lot of transition going on in my life Uh, a lot of things are going on a lot of things are happening um but change is good right Oh, it changes as good as a holiday. Well, you're looking lovely as ever and very refreshing. It's great to see you. It's been forever since I've seen you in the flesh. Now, you've moved, haven't you? 
Yes, I have. So for those of you that might know of me, I was in Adelaide. I've been living in Adelaide the last 10 years and I have recently returned to my hometown of Armadale, New South Wales, which is a very small town of about 25,000 people in um, high country, New England in New South Wales. So it's uh, one of the coldest places in Australia. So that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> to give you some idea, we had some regular minus 10 degree days um, here. And the first week that we moved up, my children got to experience snow for the first time. So that's been crazy. Um, yeah. And the reason for our move is to support, help support my mother who has dementia. So, yeah. So she um, has been on a journey with that. She's had two strokes. And so now she's, um, you know, gearing up towards the end of her life. And so we thought that that would be the best um, case for us to come and support her and my father, who is presently in Adelaide, but will be back soon. He's been down there having an operation as well. Mm. So, yeah. It's a journey, isn't it? And it seems to be, I'm not going to say you're over 40, aren't you? <clears throat> yes, I am. I'm 46 this year. But over 40, not quite 50, but it seems yeah. to be it's our journey over 40 to lean in to be carers for both generations, our parents and also our children. And we are caught between a rock and a hard place. And it's a balancing act of also running a business and balancing this. It's um, yeah. a fascinating challenge. I would well, never have expected it. I personally don't like the word balance, so I don't use that word at all. Um, what I prefer to use the term, and I guess the reason for that is like when I was struggling uh, with, you know, parenting and having young kids and a husband that was working away many, many days of the month, um, people would be like, how do you balance it all? The reality is you, you don't balance it all. Um, so I just look at it at stepping into whatever is necessary or needed in the season and then going all in into that, you know, so going full out. It's also the reason why, like a lot of people I know in business, they set lots of goals um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I tend to focus all in on one goal, achieve that and then move to the next um, is just how I prefer to live. So yeah, I think balance can be, you know, balance implies that you can have everything in order, like in all the camps. And I just don't know if that's a realistic way to look at it. So that's I, my philosophy. I, 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 I live in a world of balance though with OCD and ADHD. Oh yeah. <laughs> if I don't have all my balls balanced, <gasps> watch out. <laughs> Exactly. So you know, I think like the fitness and health and all of that, obviously we want to make sure that we're stepping into that on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, I just get a little bit like, I, I think it just sends like me the heebie-jeebies when people use the word balance. Maybe well, uh, I'll like, say okay. an inside balance and I'll be meaning something else on the outside. So now, Danielle, tell me a little bit about the whole transition because this is really huge. You've picked up everything and you've moved. Yeah, so we literally moved our lives on a trailer. So before we left, we minimised all of our possessions and we're like, if it doesn't fit on the trailer, it's not coming with us. Um, the kids and I flew up. My husband actually drove up. He drove up with our dog who unfortunately passed away the night that he arrived. So it, it has been like a real journey and also emotionally. We had our dog for 14 years, so um, that was a very big loss for us. Um, but that whole, I guess, cleansing and removing things from your life and then minimizing down your possessions, you really gain a grasp of like what's really important to you and what belongs with you on your next. And so that in itself, I think was pretty amazing. So when we got here, we very much had minimal possessions, but the things that we love came with us. Um, and, you know, we found other things, whether that be secondhand online or things that we did actually need for the kids or for our house. So, yeah, it's been certainly interesting. Um, I think, you know, your podcast is called Healing Through Love. And something I was thinking about today is just like my mother. So I've had a tenuous up and down relationship with her my entire life. Yeah. She um, had a number of issues, but predominantly because she never had a mother raising her. So her mother left when she was a baby and she never knew that mother figure in her life at all. Um, had her own, you know, mental health issues in relationship to that. 
And so I find it really interesting because I think growing up, I was a little bit of the black sheep, but what I've now noticed is I'm the one that's come home to look after her and love her unconditionally in this period of time. And like with that love has just come what I would call great forgiveness. So it's really amazing to me to see like the capacity of what our hearts can do, um, you know, even with a history and background of difficulty and challenge that we can actually step up to the plate. And I think something that I realized in this time is that it's actually not about anyone else. It's about like, how do I want to go to bed at night and sleep with my pillow on the head? You know, how, um, how do I want to sleep? Like, who do I want to show up for and as in life, irrespective of the others around me, how they behave and operate. And so I hope that that's something that can help your audience too, to realize that sometimes it's, it's actually just about like, who do we want to be in a space and how are we moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. Setting those very strong boundaries mm -hmm. and making up our own rules so that we're not living right. with people's. And uh, yeah, that's really stepping into your own power and uh, it makes all of the difference. I'm fascinated. How did you transition with your business? I know predominantly it's online and your, your audience is global, but how did you transition with the business through moving the kids from there to here and everything else that's on board with what you need to do? How did that go from a business perspective? Um, well, I've been very blessed with my business because it has always been online um, for most of the years that's been operating. Um, during the transition, like there were, I didn't have a huge number of outstanding projects. Mostly what I'm doing now is selling my online courses. So launching them and selling them. So I obviously didn't have a launch um process going on I was not in a busy season for the business which I don't know if I could have if I'd been in that busy season um so part of it was recognizing like okay what are the goals that actually need to be done in the next few months and then pushing some of those things back but the other side of it was also realizing like I have been so blessed with this business because um, my mother's had two strokes so when she had her last stroke I was able to just fly home and work from home when I say home fly here um, previously I was able to do the same when my dad had a, um, a, he had a massive emergency, um, during our COVID lockdowns in Adelaide, some, whatever it was two years ago, a year and a half, <laughs> whenever that was, uh, those two weeks of lockdown, there were no flights. We actually had to travel three days on the road to get here, my sister and I. And once again, I was able to just pick up and work and I've always been able to literally grab my laptop and even work from like the hospitals that I was in um, and most people just don't have that opportunity and that was the time when I realized what a blessing it was to be able to have that type of business where mm -hmm. I'm not overly reliant on anyone else or being in a particular place and I think um, now that's a bit more of the norm but back then it wasn't necessarily so yeah, it's been a real blessing. Oh, can we talk a little bit more about your business and what you yeah. offer? Because many of the people that are listening to us are going to be in a position where they've got a business and uh, that, you know, it could be a really good fit for them. So could you tell us a little more about the business? Sure. So my business is I'm an online business coach. So I help uh, women entrepreneurs and mum entrepreneurs predominantly I help them to create and launch their online business um, and then to start getting leads and sales. So that's really the space that I work in. So I do a lot of work both for my own business, but I also work as an affiliate partner with a couple of different businesses. One of those businesses is called Good Shepherd. I don't know if you've heard of them. Well, they're um, my church, but that's all I know. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So there is a church, but also the... Um, the other side of it, which is the microfinance and the business end of Good Shepherd. Um, and so what they do is they offer like free coaching and free consulting services to women who, um, you know, do have less income and who are wanting to start their own business instead of perhaps going and getting a job. So um, working with Good Shepherd clients has been amazing for me as well, because it does allow me to give back to those clients who might not usually be able to afford my services. So I have really two tiers, um, but it's it's really handy for your clientele to know that there are Good Shepherd offices actually everywhere in Australia. I think there's New South Wales and Victoria. 
and um, predominantly I've been dealing in Victoria and South Australia with Good Shepherd so that's been great yeah oh, that's fantastic uh, I love it yeah I help them with all elements of marketing when it comes to the online space so everything from setting up your own business online but then also like how do you track your leads through social media predominantly through social media um and and like get the right quality people coming to you and I deal mostly with coaching businesses and also service businesses but I have also worked with e-commerce um businesses as well so what would you say is the number one thing uh, that, you know, in this space, you know, lead magnets and, you know, getting the right people in front of you and the whole marketing funnel, what, what would you say is like the number one piece of advice that you could give somebody? Mm. Um, the first piece of advice that I would give them is to make sure your brand really reflects who you are and what the business is about most of the time when I come across a brand, it just doesn't either, it just doesn't look professional or professional enough, or they're catering to the wrong client. So mm -hmm. what they're selling online and how they're structuring their look and feel, it doesn't look luxury or high end. It doesn't, um, it's not going to resonate with the ideal client for them. So don't be afraid to almost repel the wrong clients from the outset would probably be my big piece of advice in relation oh. to branding. Oh. And then the second thing that I would say is people don't buy, I mean, we don't tend to buy stuff. What we do is we buy story, we buy emotion. So understand what is the story that your brand wants to tell and then sell that story. Recently, we were just down at the local markets here and the lady who was selling gin and I love gin. I like to buy it. It's one of my things I like to buy. Um, so I was always going to probably buy a bottle, but I ended up buying the entire collection. Like we spent a good couple of hundred dollars, like boom, like that at a market. Um, and I looked back on it and I was like, why did I do that? And then I was like, because she had a story attached to every single gin. So she was not just selling me a bottle of gin she was selling me the emotion and the feeling and talking about the high country and the deers walking through the forest as we you know and so you really got involved and invested on that story with her and then emotionally invested into the product and so if you want your clients to invest emotionally in the product it's all about selling the story um, and that might be your story so uh, my story is I started my business. I actually had a, a fitness business um, prior to having my own um, online marketing business. And in my fitness business, I was very ill with my second pregnancy and um, I was running it all like offline. So I, my best day was I had my little girl. I was in hospital. I checked my account and I had my very first $10,000 day from my hospital bed holding my little girl. And the first thing that you, when you have those days, the first thing, it's not actually about the money. Like for me, it was like, oh yeah, I made that goal. But then the second thing that I thought to myself is how can I help every other woman achieve this? And that's what I got really excited about. Like, how can I help others achieve this? How can I help these other women to get to that 10K day while looking after their baby, <laughs> you know, while not working those nine to five hours? Um, and I think that was the whole passion moment for me in my business. Mm. But what was interesting about this story is obviously it's a story that I've told many times before. And one day I met this person and she literally recited my story back to me because people remember stories. And I was like, where did you hear that story? <laughs> and she'd heard it like three people removed, but that's the power of story and how it follows. And so I think to be a great marketer, you just need to be great at story. Mm, yes, as a professional speaker, it's what we do. We tell yeah. stories. We should be called storytellers, not speakers. Yeah. It's all about telling exactly. the story and taking people on that emotional journey. So I love the advice that you've given for businesses in and around, you know, getting really clear that you're on the same page as your brand and that everywhere you look screams the same story. I really love that. It's very beneficial. Yeah. And um, you work with people that are both e-commerce and also in online business coaches too? 
Yes, I do. So I work with, um, predominantly I work with coaches. When I say coaches, so usually business, life and health coaches, they're my main clientele. But I have worked with many e-commerce brands, especially um, startup brands who are just getting started, just trying to get their, you know, um, brand out there. And um, mostly with those brands, we'll do a lot of work on Instagram. Right. So do you grab them after they've been branded or is being branded one of the things that you take them through? Uh, I don't brand businesses. Sorry, I've just asked my husband to come in and turn the heater off for me. It's getting hot in here. Hi, hubby. <laughs> Hi. Hello. He's, He's so running funny. errands. <laughs> He's running errands. Just, mine came and delivered my tea earlier. So, hey, we've got very supportive men in our yeah. lives. So yeah, you're yeah. speaking to them. Yeah, after- so I don't go through that branding process with them. Usually I work with businesses that have already branded. Occasionally businesses will come to me and want to work with me, but they don't have their branding yet. They might not have their colors or their logo and so on. Um, or they're not really sure of kind of like their brand voice or like what they're standing for. And when that happens, I will usually refer them to a to um, other agencies that deal specifically with branding. And you guys have some awesome people in Adelaide for that. We we have. Yeah, I don't know who you deal with, but I've dealt with uh, like Rachel Ryder from Hopscotch. She's amazing. She's amazing. Shout out, Rachel. (laughs) Yeah, and also Emily Hilda from Human Brands is also incredible. I just recently interviewed her on my um, podcast. So Yes, she is amazing. I love it all. Isn't it great? So I say women. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so branding is not really my gig. I like to start working with clients once they have um, done the branding bit and then they're seeking to um, attract the leads and get the sales. So that's really my space is around how do we attract more better leads and how do we get those sales and that comes back as we said to storytelling messaging but also I help them set up all of the automated online systems um, and teach them what they need to know about that. Yes uh, as an entrepreneur you need to have your fingers in most of the pies until you don't when the income starts then you really can outsource and then you've got a whole new interesting challenge team. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. So I always say you, people usually have time or money, but not usually both. <laughs> and sometimes they don't have either. So I can work with those people as well. <laughs> that's right. I, it's been a fascinating journey. And, you know, marketing has been one of the biggest elements of the journey to get from where I was to where I am now. And, you know, the bottom line is, if you're listening, there's a spend. <laughs> To get, to, it's not something you can just figure out for yourself. I figured this out that you do need to get uh, you do need to get assistance. You need to ask the experts. It's not just another another tunnel that you want to go down, another hole you want to go down to learn something new as an entrepreneur. You bring beautiful gifts to this planet uh, of yes. healing and coaching and the things that you do. It's not something you need to figure out yourself. Get an expert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I would like, I mean, depending on the budget that a client has and then what they're seeking to achieve, there's two types of ways you can spend your money. So one of them is if you're the person that's like, I don't want to do marketing kind of at all, um, then I would say hire an agency. But for me personally, like marketing is where the joy in business is actually at. I always say to my clients, and this is a bit cheeky, but I always say outsourcing your marketing is a bit like outsourcing sex. Ah! You could do it, but why would you want to? Um, So the alternative to outsourcing all of your marketing to an agency is to hire a coach who can teach you how to market, who can teach you what you need to look at and also can really understand with you and help you identify what are the areas of marketing that you could do yourself and what are the things that are probably not best suited to your skill set. So marketing in this day and age is very much, you've got the creative elements, but also you've very much got those metric based um, analytical elements. And that was the school that I came from. So, you know, I think that to think that you can do it all in marketing is probably a bit of a misnomer. Um, But yeah, marketing is fun and should be fun. And I think everyone can enjoy it once they know what they're actually supposed to be doing. Um, But not, it's a pretty rare mix of person that can do both the analytical 
and the design. Yes. There are clients out there. Um, one of my clients, um, Sexy Selfish, Shona Gates, she's amazing because she can do both. But there's, um, but most are either stronger in one field or another. So. Get professional help is my advice. Yeah, yeah. and at least get a coach if nothing else. Get a coach. Don't try and do it all by yourself. That's it's, right. uh, so I've I've met many people when they've gone the path of trying to become experts in that field as well as everything else, and they're just they're digging a hole for themselves because they're not available to do the things they need to be doing to earn the yeah. income. They're actually doing both sides. So they would have been so much better off early in the piece getting assistance in it. So, yeah. and it's not just about reading the articles. It is really about getting someone who can guide you through. It's like, I'm going to say, it's like navigating a minefield. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, when I work with clients, they get an action plan. So every time they do a session with me, they go away with a list of things that they have to get done before the next session. And they're not allowed to book the next session until they've done their homework. So, I yeah, I, I think keeping them accountable is really important. So, yeah. Well, 80% of what we do as a coach. <laughs> yeah, totally. And execution is the key thing. So. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I love it. Wow. It, I don't, it, it doesn't even feel like half an hour. We can talk. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we can. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, how people get in contact with you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, best place is my website. So sales funnel, super mum, mum.com.au. And if people want to have a chat with me or learn more about what I do they can book a free consultation on my contact us page so that is um that offer is there and available to anyone in your audience um I'm also on Instagram so feel free to shoot me a dm over there um it's not been very active these last few months I'm not gonna lie there's a couple of posts up there I was I have been doing I've just finished doing the course creator conference which was a U.S. summit so that's exciting um and then there's a bunch of other things that are coming up towards the end of the year. Um, so yeah, all kinds of different things. I also teach at university. So um, I'm not sure if you probably knew that Charlene, but um, I do teach first year marketing at University of New England. And so this trimester I'm course coordinating for that. It's always really exciting to see the young students coming through and learning more about marketing. And um, so that's kind of fun to keep my toes dipped in to the academic space. And I am looking at doing my PhD in marketing next year. So oh, that's watch exciting. this space. Yeah, exciting. <laughs> you, you remind me of Sarah Cordner uh, a lot. Okay. Uh, so Sarah went through the Speakers Institute with me and uh, she now runs a, oh, I don't know. I'm going to say 200 million, maybe. I don't know. It's huge. Oh, but, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I hope that's what it ends up being. Sorry, sorry, similar, and I feel a lot of similar frequency when they, when you both speak. So that's a good thing. That's yeah, a good that's thing. Right. Um, it's, uh, and I miss you already. I've yeah. been to several events in Adelaide and there's no you. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, you're too complimentary. No, it's true. Yeah. Uh, so are you doing, are, are you networking up there? Uh, look, I haven't been doing a lot of networking. Um, to Truth be told, I'm in some of the present networks already with the business owners and uh, what with working at university. I also did recently, I flew up in May, um, so before I moved. Um, they actually flew me up here to do business planning workshops. And that was exciting because one of them was out at Moree. I'm not sure where, if people know where that is. <laughs> it's uh, definitely regional. Um, and I think I nearly killed myself on the drive out there because it, there were a lot of potholes in the road with all the rain they've oh. been receiving up here. Um, so we're not in the flood areas. We're actually in the mountain, but um, certainly have had a lot of the, the rain. So yeah, look, the networking opportunities here aren't as big as what is in Adelaide, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I get around. Um, but I've also been taking this time to rework my Sales Funnel Foundations course, re-recording some of my course modules. Um, so I'm really excited about that because I'm going to be relaunching oh. that. I'm, I'm going to ask you a marketing question now. Right. Uh, right. This is just for me, but probably relevant for the audience as well. Uh, so for just the front end of funnel, uh, it's a conversation that happens so many times with my clients. Um, so I deal specifically in intellectual property. 
and getting it trademarked and getting all of that process done. So, you know, it's always a thing. Now that you've got this signature program and you've got this thing you can deliver, what do you do as the front end of funnel? And, like, the debate is always in and around, do you do a challenge? Because these are all online offerings. Do you do a challenge or do you do a webinar? Well, now we call them masterclasses. Like what is, you know, in your professional opinion, is there a preference between the front end of funnel, like either free or low price for for them getting into the process? Yeah, right. Good question. So um, sometimes it is to do with trend, but I always look at it in terms of where the customer is at in their life cycle. So if we look at our current customer, they're going to be either at the awareness stage where they're just like, oh, this Charlene has just popped up. I don't know who she is from a slice of bread, um, but she looks interesting and I'll just kind of get to know a bit of, bit more about her. They could be in the like consideration stage where they're like, oh, look, I know that um, Charlene's a speaker coach, but also there's so-and-so and so-and-so. So they could be actually considering like who would they want to maybe work with in that space or they're at the very pointy end of the stick where they're, they're ready to buy. They're making the decision and they're going to convert. Okay. So um, if you looked at that, like buying a car, right? So when you go into the dealer, um, you might just pop in because your hubby wants to go have a look at different cars. So you might just be like, I'm not interested in buying a car. I'm just going to follow him around into the dealer shop. But then once you're there, maybe you'll see something you like. Or you might deliberately go to the car dealer shop with the intent to look at this model, that model, and the other model, the different dealers. Or you might just go in, fall in love with something and buy it, like happened recently with me with my secondhand car. I just like saw something, he showed me, oh, I've got this other car out the back. I was like, I love it, I'll buy it, right? So it really depends on like the like where is your customer at? And we have to have a funnel that's gonna suit a buyer that's at all three stages. Mm, um, yes, if you think true. About that. True. But that being said, so uh, webinars or masterclasses, as everyone's calling them now, still have a place. But I think the challenge is well and truly here to stay. The problem with a masterclass is how much can you really get to know someone over one hour, you know? Um, and really, the process that we're looking at is uh, how are we engaging with our ideal customers? And so that's what you get to do over the course of the challenge. Yeah. Now there are going to be drop-off points in a challenge and no drop-off points. And some of it also does depend on pricing too, depending on where your price points are sitting. Um, but I'd say I run one of two. So I do run a challenge, I do run challenges and they always convert fairly well. Um, I run summits as well, like the recent SA Women in Digital Marketing Summit. That was a great um leader for for leads coming into my business because clearly there are people interested in marketing who are signing up um but then I also have pre-recorded master classes and the reason why I like pre-recorded is that when someone is like okay cool I'm interested in that lead magnet I'm going to download it oh now there's a master class I can watch immediately boom like if they're ready to buy you're going to get that person um so yeah it's it's a little bit of the how long is a piece of string <laughs> moment. Um, but I would say those three things combined. So summits, master, pre-recorded masterclasses and um, challenges all fit the bill. Mm, so true. It's all about where you are on the customer journey, where your customer is. And it is, you're right. It's like a piece of string. <laughs> Yeah. And the other thing doing? that I would say is that like, you don't want to be pre-recording your masterclasses until you really know your audience and you've run them live a lot. Uh, so there's no point doing a pre-recorded one until you really like clear on your message, your market, where in the masterclass they're going to buy and so yes. on and so forth. Yes. Yes, well, um, so I've been running them since 2018. I think I figured it out. Uh, but yes, and I still run them live. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, it's just I like that live interaction. I like communicating with them. I like um, them live asking questions and live answering them. Yes, and there is a place for the recording as well. It's all there. It's exciting. And you've heard it from the expert marketer, Danielle. All right, now we've got all of your links. So we've got ways you'll find them, depending on where you're viewing this, uh, it'll be above or below. Yeah. 
depending on where you're viewing today's recording. It's been a privilege and a pleasure to spend this quality time with you. I miss you. I'm looking forward to somehow having more to do with you awesome. and uh, and uh, looking forward to what that could look like. It's been yeah. a privilege. Any last words to our audience today? Um, I just wanted to really encourage your audience. I'm someone that did come from a background of I have been in abusive relationships in the past. I have overcome a lot of mental trauma and anguish and all of those things in my life to be where I'm at today. And um, the journey's never over, but, you know, it is amazing how strong and resilient we can be as women. And I just really wanted to encourage each and every woman that is in your community um, just to know, well, just to know, number one, you are so loved and you're so needed and your gift is so needed in this world. So just really, um, you know, focus on that. Focus on what it is that you feel called to do and what's the legacy and impact that you're going to leave the world because it doesn't matter how you came in, <laughs> but when you go, you want to make sure that you've um, impacted others. Um, and same for you, Charlene. You do such an amazing job of impacting others in such a positive and encouraging and heartfelt way. So I would just send that message to everyone in your community that's listening. Oh, you're so beautiful. This is why we love her and this is why we miss her. And it's a bye from me and Danielle. Lovely to see you this evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast. Music.